And the punter Rigoberto Sanchez ready to go, and we are underway from Lucas Oil Stadium. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. straight to the air he finds his man complete that's Jacobs four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage second down well offensively that's the mismatch that you want you want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield out in some open space the linebackers nowadays they run like backs and they take a lot of pride in covering what a nice play he made there in the open field now the NFL's leading rusher a season ago, Josh Jacobs. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Back to throw, O'Connell. Just swing that out wide to Jacobs. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed four, but got three. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? So on fourth down, here's A.J. Cole to punt for the Raiders. The deep to return is Josh Downs. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Now the NFL's leading rusher in 2021, Jonathan Taylor. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the ten. Malcolm Koontz there on the tackle. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Now second and five. Minshew sets to throw. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. It'll be a gain of five. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 23 yards on the play. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Looking to throw it, Minshew. 
And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Pittman. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, grab that dagger play, grab that play and just finish them off right now, because I think they'd love to get that big advantage on it. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. A lot depending on the spot there, and he got it. But it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Switch, switch, switch. They run once more with Taylor. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They work now on second and nine. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This one completes Alec Pierce. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 39. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. we got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game. It will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it. It was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. From the gun, it's Taylor. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. He'll get four yards of the carry there, and we will get to the end of the first quarter of play. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now from Indianapolis with the homestanding Colts in possession as they've got it with a third down coming up. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Now Minshew. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. The Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3 nothing. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. DeAndre Carter returning it, taking it about the one, and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. This one a little slow to get cooking. Just a 3-0 scoreline as they begin with a first and 10. From the shotgun, O'Connell. And he fends him off. Trying to drop one in, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's second and ten. Fakes the handoff, now O'Connell to throw. Oh, and a bad throw there, it's intercepted. Picked off by Julian Blackman. And he will bring it back, an interception return for a Colts TD. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This fielded right at the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. They were trying to create some space to run. They created the penalty. And you work on it so much. You work on it so hard but it's tough to simulate game speed in practice that often runs you into a penalty. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Jacob's going to try the middle. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Here's O'Connell. He gets this to Devontae Adams. Yeah, he'll get this one way up, just shy of the 45-yard line. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. And this may be the one to build on right here. It's the second quarter. They've got nothing on the scoreboard as of yet. They need to put something together, and this is a good start as they get the completion there for good yardage and a first down.
This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Off the play fake, O'Connell. He's got Hooper on the short connection. This will wind up a loss on the play, and that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. A yard all they need, but it's third down. And O'Connell now to throw. Work it. Oh, now he's stripped. He lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. From the 46, here's second and three. Here's Minshew. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Here's a run on first down that won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He will lose a yard, second and 11. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. Second and 11. They'll look to throw. That's caught. It's Josh Downs. So five yards here, five on the play. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Minshew throwing on third down. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Now that's into the hands of Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Ball resting on the 10 yard line. It's second and one. It'll be Minshew again. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. 
I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Out of the gun is Minshew. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. Back to throw again. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Taylor is going to take this one in for a Colts touchdown. And the thing you have to love about Jonathan Taylor, he's a shifty speed guy most of the time when you hand him the football, but he's not coming off the field when you get down near the goal line because he's as tough and gritty as they come. And he finishes things off here by getting into the end zone. Gay is on for the point after. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. The Raider offense going to head out now late in this first half. But Charles, you're down multiple scores, less than a minute left here. But with that deficit, they've got to try to at least work their way into field goal range to try to muster something out of this drive. And I'm going to go ahead and date myself one more time because I'm going to quote an old Smokey and the Bandit lyric. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. But they still have time to get it done. So I'm looking forward to watching them mount this drive and see if they can get some points out of it. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing, O'Connell. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Third and two. to throw here, O'Connell. He finds his man complete. That's Jacobs. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. 
So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. Minshew, first and ten. And this taken in by Downs. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. Back to throw. This one finds Pierce on the out route. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Behind the chain, second and 12. They'll set up to throw. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports. Well, you can't skip halftime on Sundays, but you can right here. So it's over, and on to the third quarter we march. first half 17 nothing our score as we get going in quarter number three and up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25 and the Colts going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter this offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it and try and win this ball game. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Two catches in the first half, now he's got a third here and it's good for a first. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So from the 36 now, first and 10. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. And they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and six. Again, it's Taylor. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. 
Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. But that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, you know they had a third down play on standby just in case, but he says no need with that carry. Runs like that will continually earn him more work in this and future contests. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Divine Diablo there to make the stop. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second and nine. Off play action, it's Minshew. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Well, they tried to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage, and that throw had no shot. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll look to throw here. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was waving his arms, won the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass and you blew coverage on, what did you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, that's, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that that's answer. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> cold-blooded. <laughs> Showed off the footwork, but still corralled shy of the five at the six. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Well, flag comes in, it's incomplete, and I'm not sure he was still behind the line when he let that one go. So they will decline that penalty, and that's going to force a fourth and goal. Colts send out their new kicker for 2023, Matt Gay, for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Gay's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, 
Keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. DeAndre Carter now from his end zone. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. Throw out wide is incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Looking deep for Adams. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary, it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And they will take over first and 10. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 40. They'll run with Taylor to begin the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Here's second and seven. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And they'll hold him to three there as he takes this up to the 47. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and four. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. 
he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball. You often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Downs going in motion right. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give to Taylor. Now they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 69 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. Now I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. The slot man in motion right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Colts first down, and it's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. On second down, Minshew. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And the Colts are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll run here with Taylor. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts are able to add on to that lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. The bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so.
Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And now here come the Raiders. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny. I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big. You really have like one possession left, and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets double zone man you name it make sure he gets a lot of angles now throw out wide gonna be incomplete and that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall it's been a blowout it's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other now a second and ten now o'connell it's got Hooper on the short connection. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here is third and five. Now it's O'Connell. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here. You've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. O'Connell. And it's incomplete. They did not convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Colts are going to take over with a football. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And the Colts coming out now. And checking the timeouts, they do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 96 yards rushing here for Taylor. He's got a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. to Taylor on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Oh, they absolutely put